Mouse, One and Two, by Art Spiegelman. A project on your own reading by Larry Ross. Every Holocaust survivor has their own unique and individual story to tell of their experiences during the Holocaust. Mouse is another one of these stories that follows the main theme of the Holocaust stories, but not in the normal fashion that we're used to. The book is what we refer to as a graphic novel. Quite similar to comic books, graphic novels use sequential art to tell a story, but unlike comic books, graphic novels are generally standalone stories with more complex plots. Art Spiegelman, the author of Mouse, decided that instead of drawing humans that he would use animals to portray the many different races of people that played a role during the time of the Holocaust. The animals used, while they may be deemed interesting to some, may, de may be deemed offensive to others. Jews in the story of Moss was depicted as mice as their animal, past and present. The Jewish people had to fight to survive the Holocaust. They scavenged food to keep up their strength and stayed hid from the Nazi regime. Just like normal mice. The obvious choice for the Germans were cats, where ch cats would hunt mice, capture, torture, and ultimately kill the mouse. This was much like how the Germans would hunt down the Jews during the Holocaust. Polish people were depicted as pigs, while not intending to portray them negatively, such as greedy, filthy pigs, his reasons were more complicated. There were plenty of sympathetic, positive Polish people in the story who helped Vladek and his wife hide from the Nazis at great personal risk. He wanted an animal that was neutral to mice, and since Nazis would call the Poles Schwein, German for pig, it made pigs the logical choice. Americans were depicted as dogs, representing power, friendliness, loyalty, and other positive values where, kind of like dogs like to chase cats. This was symbolic in Moss because the Americans sympathized with the Jewish people. The remaining representation of races include the Roma as Moss, Gypsy Moss, French as Frogs, Swedes as Reindeer, British by fish. I'm going to run through the story briefly. The story begins with Artie paying a visit to his father alone, uh, Vladik Spiegelman in Rigo Park. He hasn't seen him in a long time. Artie's wife had not come on this particular visit, but she sent her regards. Uh, Artie noticed how his father had aged quite a bit since seeing him last. It's probably because you know, his wife died, and his health problems. Well, her, his wife died from suicide as well. And since the suicide, he had remarried to a woman named Mala. He doesn't really care for Mala too awful much. And, you know, she thinks he's a greedy pig anyway. And Artie tells his mother, tells his father that he is still inter interested in drawing the book he'd previously told him about. Uh, the book was going to be about his life experience during the Holocaust. Vladik begins with telling Artie how he was a salesperson who bought and sold textiles. Textile, textiles were a type of cloth or woven, woven fabric, in uh, this case, women's nylons. Vladik was seeing a girl named Lucia for a while. He wasn't really interested in having a relationship with this girl for some reason. He seemed more interested in a girl named Anja who was from a wealthy family. Vladik and Anja eventually got married, and her father gave him the money. And her father gave him the money to start his own textile company. After one of Vladik's business trips, he learns that Anja is involved with a conspiracy that could have her arrested. He, she was secretly translating communist messages and passing them on. She was able to get away with it due to one of her tenants covering for her. Her tenants served a few months in jail, but did not sell her out. For the tenants' trouble, she was compensated with paid lawyer fees and 15,000 zlotys, Polish currency. Anja and Vladik had a premature, ch premature son, Rishi. After having the child, uh, Anja fell into depression and had to be taken to a sanitarium in Czechoslovakia. It was one of the most expensive and beautiful sanitariums in, in the world. 
It was during their trip when they would first see the swastika with their own eyes. They would hear stories of how Jewish businesses were sold to the Germans and the Jews were run out of the country without the money from the business. There were rumors of Jews disappearing and not being heard from again, synagogues being burned, Jews beaten for no reason, and Jews being run out of town. After Anja recovers from her illness, and upon returning to their home in Poland, they learned that their factory was robbed and completely cleaned out, leaving nothing. They did not think it was just another robbery, but some type of anti-Semitic activity. There were reports of riots where people would be yelling, Jews out. A year later, Wladyk would be drafted into the Polish army as he was part of the Polish reserves. He was given basic training and placed on the frontier while they were fighting off the invading Germans. Uh, he managed to kill one German, but they were quickly captured and placed in, in a prisoner of war camp where they were worked and starved. Eventually, he was released as a Polish prisoner of war, as there was international wars that protected Polish POWs. Wladyk would pretend he was Polish and bribe his way back to his family. It was now 1941, and by German order, all Jews had to be relocated to different living areas. In Vladik's case, the entire family was moved into two and a half small rooms. By now, the German occupation was in full effect, and Jews were being taken away to concentration camps. Vladik and Anja decided to send their son away with relatives to a more safe area, but a few months later, the Germans decided to finish off the area where Richie was. Upon learning of their upcoming fate of the Camp Auschwitz, Richie's guardian, Tasha, took her own life, her two children, and his own. Vladik and Anja were able to hide for quite some time, seeking shelter from place to place. They were able to hide in Polish woman's barn for a while until the woman thought she was going to be searched by the Germans, so she had to make them leave. They eventually heard some smugglers who may be able to smuggle them to Germany, but the smugglers deceived them and turned them over to the Germans. Vladik continues to tell his story about Auschwitz, about how he and Angel were both separated, and how the Germans told the prisoners to all strip and give up all their valuables, and how they all got shaved of their hair from head to toe, they got ran through freezing showers, issued wrong sliced clothes, and how they registered each prisoner with their own number tattoo. The smell of Auschwitz was terrible, described as, as, as a Swedish rubber burning and fat. Vladik was pretty resourceful. He, he was a pretty smart guy, and he had a few noteworthy skills that really helped him throughout his time at Auschwitz. Uh, the, he uh, spoke several languages, so he taught English to guards, and, and he was able to repair shoes. Um, you know, we, we learned that Anja was at, camp, at a camp nearby, and uh, he actually was able to get her moved over to Auschwitz by giving up his uh, cigarettes and food rations for a few weeks. So it was pretty good, pretty good of him to do that. We now that learn that the Russian army is getting close to Auschwitz. Uh, they hear the cannons getting dangerously close. So the Germans got worried and planned to move the camp back into Germany. So Vladik and his friends decided they would hide in an unused attic during the evacuation but were told the Germans would be blowing up Auschwitz when they left, so they decided that probably wasn't a good idea. So, they, you know, they marched with the rest of their prisoners. They were all marched over a hundred miles and forced to board a cattle train with no food and water for days. Many Jews perished. From there, they were put into barracks where the, where the straw they laid had lice, in, and then they got the typhus from the lice. You know, the typhus is a bacterial disease that's spread by lice. Or fleas, actually. If the prisoners were found to have them, and they wouldn't get fed that day. Uh, so he manages to con someone out of their, their shirt so he could uh, have a clean shirt to uh, keep clean and lice free so he could get to eat. Uh, but, you know, he finally did become ill from the typhus. He actually managed to survive. As he was getting well from his uh, fever from typhus, he heard an announcement that all prisoners well enough to travel would line up outside to be exchanged as prisoners of war. Uh, he, he was able to bribe his way down to the train. You know, he needed help because he couldn't walk from the typhus. Uh, he got on the train heading to Switzerland. He, he got given a care package that's 
from the Red Cross with food. Before the, but before the train reaches the border, they're forced to get off the train and walk. They hear the war is over, but not released. But they are taken aboard another train that will take them to the Americans in the next town. When the train stops, the Americans are nowhere to be found. Vladek and others are taken to a nearby barn where they thought they was going to be killed the next day. Instead, they were able to. They woke up and found out all the Germans had gone, uh, leaving all their guns and things behind. They all managed to find a place to stay in an empty house where they would like ride out the rest of the war. Um, they eventually were uh, caught there by the Americans. After staying with the Americans for a little while, uh, they eventually were let go, and he found uh, Anja, and uh, and they were reunited. They were happy, and uh, at this point, uh, Vladik was done telling his story, and that was the end of the books. Uh, these are these are really good books, and I really really enjoyed reading them. Especially, you know, I, I picked them up and, and I couldn't put them down because, I, you know, they were that good. I mean, usually I don't think that way about books, but this one really caught my interest somehow, you know. And you know, throughout the story, it, it really reflects how the Holocaust really affected him, Vladik, and art. You know, Vladik was a man who really was tight with his money. You know, he tried to scrimp and save as much as possible. You know, maybe it's due to the condition he endured at Auschwitz. Uh, you know, his current wife didn't see eye to eye with him. She, he just, he thought she was just after his money. Um, he may have been correct because every time we saw her, you know, she was always like, "He doesn't give me money." You know, I want money. So she left him eventually. But they, he, she came back when she heard he had like gotten sick. But uh, you know, and, and another thing that kind of stood out was Vladik. He, he there was going down the road. Him and Art and uh, Lu, uh, Art's wife. They were going down the road to a grocery store and. There was this hitchhiker, and the, the hitchhiker was black, and he was like, no, no, don't pick up that, that hitchhiker, he's black, you know, and he called him some other racist word I can't pronounce, but um, but it just showed that even though he was persecuted and and everyone was racist toward him, he was still racist in the end. It was, it, it's really strange that he would think that way. I mean, I, I didn't get it, but uh, that's really about it. It was a great book, you know, y'all should pick it up and read it. Thanks.